Welcome back, folks. Once again to Wrestle Rants. I'm Graham Jesus Matthews. As always, breaking down all the pay per views that I watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're capping off my fully loaded reviews here on the show by talking about Fully Loaded 2000 and easily, undoubtedly, the best installment of the three shows. Again, not saying much. The 98 show is not good. The 99 show was good. This show was freaking phenomenal, which really shouldn't surprise anyone who has either watched these reviews over the past year or so or has, you know, watched wrestling during the year of 2000. For both those reasons combined, because I've talked about this in WrestleRant videos in the past couple of months, that the year of 2000 was on freaking fire with Rock, Triple H, Taker as Badass Undertaker and everything else, Jericho, Benoit, all those guys freaking ripping it up in the year of 2000, having amazing matches. Kurt Angle, how could I forget, how could I forget Kurt Angle? Um, WrestleMania that year obviously was not that great, but the year on the whole, especially after WrestleMania, was amazing. And this was one of those shows that really stood out as one of the best pay-per-views that WWE ever did during that period of time, which is saying a lot, because they had a lot of great pay-per-views in 98, 99, and specifically 2000, 2001. But I, I really, really thought this was a great show, and I can't wait to talk about it. Starting with the opener... Uh, for the tag team titles, or not for the tag team titles, rather, just a standard six-man tag team match. I'm getting ahead of myself. The Hardy Boys teaming up later to take on TNA and Trish Stratus, Test Albert and Trish. Uh, great match. Great opener. I'm expecting, you know, a short-lived little opener, but they ended up getting almost 15 minutes. And everyone worked well here. Lita stole the show with her performance here. Bumping all over the place for TNA. For, you know, doing, not TNA the company, obviously, but you know what I mean. Test and Albert. Doing her moves on Test and Albert in addition to Trish. Really kicking off the Trish and Lita feud on a high note with all the stuff they were able to do here. Just great stuff from start to finish. A really, really fun match. A lot of close near falls. In the end, the babyfaces get the feel-good victory to score the win and kick off the show on a high note. So a really, really fun match that I thoroughly enjoyed. After that, we had Taz versus Al Snow. Taz making his pay-per-view return here. He was gone for a while. He got attacked by Chris Benoit. Returned on this show. Quickly beat Al Snow in a throwaway match. Really nothing else to it. Uh, Perry Saturn taking on Eddie Guerrero for the European Championship up next. Match was all right. Um, I probably expect a little more given their history, but at least it was the match that made sense given their history in the uh, freaking, what was the name of their uh, fucking shit? Him, Benoit, Eddie, whatever the name of their, their stable was. Oh, God, it's going to bother me now. I'm going to have to look it up. I, I, it's going to bother me for the rest of the video. I'm always If you guys listen to these pay-per-view reviews a lot, you know that I'm going to do this, that I do this from time to time. Oh, let's go to his Wikipedia. The Radicals. The Radicals. How could I forget? Wow, great stable. And these guys had history from that stable. Saturn beat him here for the European Championship. All right, match. Eddie looked better than Perry. I mean, I mean that's not really that much of a surprise. I was never a huge Perry Saturn fan to begin with. But anyway, all right, match. The title changed, so it was, new, new, it was newsworthy in that respect. After that, this match was for the tag team titles. The APA taking on Edge and Christian. And a short-lived match. The match wasn't really that good. Edge and Christian got themselves DQ to retain the titles. So the match wasn't good. What was more entertaining than the match itself was the segments that took place throughout the night between Edge, Christian, and Mick Floyd, the commissioner, collectively known as Team Credgley, um, who was on table for three not too long ago, about a month or so ago. Definitely check that out. But uh, those were very entertaining. I remember watching those on Mick Foley's documentary, which is also available on the WWE Network for the low price of $9.99 a month. But uh, this match didn't, wasn't really that good. But the chemistry that they had with Mick Foley as the commissioner was just off the charts awesome. No pun intended, no reeking of awesomeness, but you know what I mean. Um, they just worked so well together in the backstage segments. They were really entertaining, and that was really no exception on this show. So the match sucked, but the backstage segments were great, though. With uh, Christian feigning an illness and pretending to put puke in the toilet. <laughs> and Foley saying, guys, you are oh so totally busted. Like, great stuff. Check it out. So after that, we had Vel Venus taking on Rikishi for the Intercontinental Championship inside a steel cage. In a pretty good match. I mean, Rikishi, I would say one of his better singles matches that he ever had. This was right before the big reveal. And he was revealed to be the guy behind Stone Cold Steve Austin getting attacked. So this is before he went heel. And he was still over as a babyface. So I really saw no no purpose in turning him heel just because he did nothing as heel he got one main event pay-per-view match out of it at armageddon inside hell in the cell where he took one of the most iconic bumps of all time speaking of which by the way the one bump that i feel like does not get the recognition it deserves is when rikishi jumped off the top of the cage here on top of perry or perry saturn uh they look the same uh val venus and that was a great looking spot in the end rikishi lost the match val venus retained the title but the match itself was all right it's remembered very fondly for that one spot, which, again, I don't feel like it gets the credit it deserves. 
I haven't seen enough of that spot and like highlight reels and stuff. I don't even know if it was mentioned. It probably was in his Hall of Fame video package a couple years ago for Rikishi. I don't remember exactly. Probably was, though. It had to be. One of the highlights of his WWE career, which did not have many of them <laughs> on his own anyway. But uh, the match was good, but I felt like that spot really stole the match, and it was really uh, a lot like with Shane and Undertaker this year at WrestleMania. The match itself wasn't like phenomenal, but that one spot with Shane jumping off the top of the cell really was the most memorable moment of that entire match. After that are three main events, a back-to-back-to-back main event matches here. Um, starting off first with The Undertaker versus Kurt Angle. Not a really good match. Their time got cut short. Taker won the match. A fun feud, but the match wasn't that good. They would have a much better match, obviously. Um, not only at SummerSlam, but as you guys probably know, No Way Out 2006. That was a phenomenal match. And one of the best matches that has ever occurred in the last 10 years that did not take place at WrestleMania. So if you're watching that match and thinking of the No Way Out match, if you're watching this match and thinking of that match, you're probably going to be disappointed. So not that good of a match. Taker wins here. Um, after that, last man standing with Triple H taking on Chris Jericho. Phenomenal match. These guys, a lot like Triple H and The Rock, had freaking great chemistry. In 2000, I don't care what anyone says, what's Triple H's year? From winning at WrestleMania to the amazing matches he had with The Rock throughout the year and including the matches he had with Chris Jericho, he was on fire. On fire. Fire the Hell in the Cell performance at Armageddon that year. He was just kicking ass all year round. Also a Stone Cold Steve Austin. So again, these guys were really doing themselves justice, or at least Triple H was, with the matches that he was putting on the year 2000. This was another great example of how amazing he was in the year of 2000 with a phenomenal performance versus Chris Jericho, who also deserves credit for looking great in defeat. He had an amazing performance here too, proving he could hang at that top tier level. He wouldn't become Undisputed Champion for another year and a half or so, um, but still, he would prove to the elite in WWE that he could hang with the best of them. And I love the finish, too. I think it was a back body drop or a pedigree through the commentary table. But whatever it was, they went through the table. Both guys were down in that. Triple H barely made it back to his feet in time to break the count and then fell right back down to his feet to win the match or right, fell right back down to his side on the ground to uh, before or right after winning the match. So really great finish, amazing match. And uh, one of the better, if not the best, last man standing match I've ever seen, which is saying a lot. But these guys really worked well together and put forth a hell of an effort. After that, the main event for the WWE title, Chris Benoit contending for the gold with Shane McMahon in his corner against The Rock in another great match. And it really surprises me how they made Benoit look as much of a threat to the WWE title as they did. And the finish that was really good too, Benoit got his... 15 seconds of sorts of fame and winning the belt, and the referee thought that, and the stipulation was that if Rock got DQ'd, then he would have to forfeit the championship, and technically he did get DQ'd, Earl Hebner thought he got, you know, he hit him with a chair, and, and in reality it was Shane, the match gets restarted by Commissioner Mick Foley, in the end, The Rock and Benoit battle for another two more minutes, forces him to tap out, or no, pins him with a rock bottom to retain the title, again, great match, the last man standing match was just a hair better, but as far as this match goes, Phenomenal main event, Benoit, again, a lot like Jericho, proved that he could hang with the elite in WWE. Unlike Jericho, though, it would not be another year, but rather another four years before he would get his first real world championship reign in WWE in the form of the World Heavyweight Championship in 2004. But this was a real breakout match for Benoit. It really makes me ashamed that they didn't do more with him in 2000. I mean, he had a great year that year, too, but I don't think he was in any top matches at SummerSlam the very next month. This was more of a filler show. Um, to build to SummerSlam again, but unlike in 99 and 98, it was a great filler show with a lot of great matches. So the two main events are phenomenal. The show, the entire show, the entire event is well worth watching. Two thumbs up. The entire year is worth watching. So check out every pay-per-view from the year of 2000 in WWE, but specifically fully loaded 2000. The two main events are great. Any one match, it's a toss-up between the main event and the last man standing match. Ultimately, I would go with Triple H and Jericho just because... The stipulation, I thought they made the most of it. For a match that's traditionally not all that exciting, they really made it one of the best matches from that year. And a real breakout performance for Jericho, like I said. The main event was great, too. The undercard was very fun. The opener was awesome. Um, not a perfect show, by any means. You know, Taz and Elsa was throwaway. Acolytes and Edge and Christian was throwaway. But the segments with Edge and Christian were great. Val Venus and Rikishi was good. Rikishi, our uh, taker and angle, was a bit disappointing, but not terrible. But overall, awesome show. Check it out only on the WWE Network. And that's it, guys. My review of Fully Loaded 2000. That is also it. My reviews of Fully Loaded overall. There's only three shows. Um, so my next video will be covering, at long last, for the first time in WrestleRant's history for the past two and a half years since I started reviewing pay-per-views here in WrestleRant, 
Invasion 2001. Believe it or not, I have never seen the show before now. And I have yet to watch it as of this recording. So I'll be watching it this week. The video will be up at some point, you know, this week, weekend, whatever it might be. I'm recording this so far in advance. I have no idea when it's going up. But as you guys know, my next video will be covering The Invasion 2001. My thoughts on that infamous event. So until then, guys, you can find me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Graham.Jason.Matthews and right here on the YouTube by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. So until next time, guys, I'm Graham Jason Matthews. All support is amazingly appreciated, and I'll catch you folks down the road.